So here's the deal. If somebody is paying you a wage, you owe that person or company allegiance. If you don't like what's happening in the workplace, go to Human Resources or leave. And today, Wendy Walsh did exactly that. In one or two sentences, could you please give me the primary reason for your report? Yes. Uh, in 2013, I experienced sexual harassment as a job applicant at Fox News Channel by an employee named Mr. Bill O'Reilly. Joining us now, Wendy Walsh, psychologist and radio host who used to appear on Fox News. Also with us, Lisa Bloom, who is uh, Wendy's attorney. Uh, Wendy, how did that phone call to the Fox News hotline go today? Well, I was surprised it was really professional. Um, I think it was an outside agency because she didn't recognize the name Bill O'Reilly and she didn't know about the O'Reilly factor and had me spell out everything carefully. Um, she was very neutral, so, you know, I liked that because if somebody else is calling in, they don't want to feel judged. Uh, they just want the story told. Uh, and, get, and somebody to get the facts down to begin an investigation. Uh, Wendy, I, I want you to tell us that story, but let me just quickly check with Lisa on the legal point, uh, because I, I was struck, Lisa, that O'Reilly's lawyer would, would threaten uh, to sue Wendy, but that is a common t intimidation tactic. Uh, he has threatened to sue me. I begged him to sue me when he did that, <laughs> because I would love to get him in a deposition. And that's yeah. why I begged him to sue me again uh, within this story about Wendy, because I know I, I know he won't, and I'm sure he won't sue, sue Wendy. He won't dare. But give me your legal read, reading of that. Well, good for you, Lawrence, and we're so proud of you for doing that. Of course, Wendy's in a very different situation, and when she got that very scary lawyer's letter, you know, look, she's a single mom. Uh, she's not a wealthy and powerful person, and she found it very scary and intimidating. She immediately sent it to me. I responded, don't you dare ever contact her directly again. I represent her. And, you know, silence uh, after that. Let me let me just clarify. I meant that Donald Trump threatened to sue me. Somehow I blur those two guys, O'Reilly and Trump. <laughs> Wendy, uh, tell us what happened with with you and and Bill O'Reilly. Uh, well, I was invited in January of thirteen to come on his show. I was told by the segment producer that he had seen me on TV and wanted me on his show. And three weeks after appearing, and often uh, you know these sort of segments that he makes special for you that are regular, are kind of an audition to become. A contributor. And three weeks into it, that was proved true to me when his executive assistant sent me an email inviting me to have dinner with him at the Bel Air Hotel, saying he would be in Los Angeles. I was really excited because I wanted to talk about my career prospects at Fox News. And I didn't have to bring them up because at the beginning of the dinner, he brought it up, telling me that Roger Ailes, um, I'm sorry, I didn't even know who Roger Ailes was at that point, um, was a friend of his, and the two of them would like to sign off on me as a contributor, a paid contributor. And then we talked about everything else during the dinner. I'm a relationship expert, a psychologist. People confide to me in all kinds of things, and I will leave all that conversation to private, and, and this is not relevant here. And then at the end of the dinner, he said, let's get out of here. So I assumed we were going to the bar to finish a conversation about my career prospects. And when we walked past the hostess stand, I turned left towards the bar. He turned right towards the suites, the rooms. And we didn't even realize we were walking away from each other until a moment later we turned, and it was kind of awkward. And I said, I think the bar is this way. And he said, no, come on, come back to my suite. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And he said, what, do you think I'm going to attack you or something? And I said, you know, trying to save. I don't want the big boss mad at me. So I just said, Bill, you know, we're both raising teenage girls. I think it's important that we model good choices. He sighed and said, okay. And we went into the bar. Admittedly, it was very busy. It was the night before the Academy Awards. We had a bad table beside the piano. We couldn't hear well. And he immediately became angry, hostile, and insulting to me. And you could see that, I mean, this whole bar experience lasted maybe 15 minutes. I mean, enough for me to get a glass of soda water and him to complain about the price of it. Um, and then I left. And so then I spent a few months trying hard to save the relationship, sending flattering emails. This is what victims of sexual harassment do all the time. We think, well, I'll let him know I'm not a threat. I'll let him know I'm not litigious. I'll get the job he promised me. And I watched him grow colder, more avoidant, more withdrawn on set. Uh, there was no chit chat on the commercial break anymore. And then the last time I saw him, I happened to be in New York on book tour, and I sat down uh, on set with him, and he totally ignored me, except to look up from his script at one point and say, 
when are you leaving? And then later had the executive producer, David Tabakoff, call me and say, we're going to put your segment on hold. But they didn't ever bring it back. And uh, Wendy, uh, what, did, did it come from out of nowhere, that, that moment where you felt, ah, th th this is the moment? Uh, did, was that surprise you, or as, as the evening wore on, were you getting clues that he might want to go in that direction? I actually didn't, and I'm a psychologist. I'm usually pretty good at this. He, I mean, he said a few things like, you're a very beautiful woman, but I work in the television business. It's a visual medium. It's something I've heard before. Um, he, he wasn't overly flirtatious. He talked to me, as adults do often, even in business dinners, about the things we care about most, our own relationships, our families, our children. And um, so, again, I just thought it was, you know, a somewhat pleasant and somewhat intimate, though not sexual, business dinner. And um, I really, I mean, I marched toward that bar thinking he was walking right beside me. That's where we were going. I never thought the invitation to his bedroom. But today in the Oval Office, President of the United States said about this, I don't think Bill did anything wrong. Your reaction to that? It's so disgusting. I feel like President Trump is making our entire country a hostile environment for working women. He shows such utter disregard for half of the population, even though he's supposed to be the president for all of us. You know, he stands by Bill O'Reilly, who has had six women, according to the New York Times, complain of sexual harassment. Two of them, according to the New York Times, have recordings. Uh, about some things that I, I may not even be able to say on your show. I mean, really vile, sexually explicit stuff. In Wendy's case, he's accused of depriving her a of a job to which she was otherwise entitled. And this president of ours stands by Bill O'Reilly. I mean, it's just disgusting. Wendy, uh, the, the president apparently read this exhaustive New York Times report that includes your story. Uh, mm -hmm. You were one of the few people in the article who was able to fully tell her story because you haven't uh, entered into a highly paid legal agreement not to. And then today, the president of the United States said, I don't think Bill did anything wrong. How did that make you feel? Well, I think that really this national discourse that we're having here is training a small group of men of a certain generation who believe in traditional gender roles to the point that women are sexual objects no matter where they appear in their eyeline, even in a workplace. And I believe that they are peers in that sense. Uh, so that's. You know, he wouldn't understand it. He wouldn't understand that, you know, by the time I got to the bar and I was shaking, worrying about how to save my job, I had to listen to Mr. Bill O'Reilly say, oh, and you forget, you can forget about all the career advice I gave you. You're on your own, which was clearly him saying, it's over now. Wendy Walsh, thank you very much for joining us thank tonight. You. And I really admire the way you've handled yourself through this uh, and, and that decision to tell the New York Times the story. And as you've said publicly already, because you know so many other women cannot. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.